everybody, this is Chad the Gaming Dad here, and it's about time we talk a little bit honest about Star Wars Battlefront 2. Much has been said about this game and the fact that EA was trying to monetize everything by doing all kinds of crazy loot boxes and progression. If they've changed this, they've changed that. Uh, as of right now, the DLC that's going to be coming out around the movie in like a week is going to be free still. And uh, in the future, it's supposed to be free, etc., etc. So let me just do a little quick story. Uh, a lot of people have been boycotting this game, myself included. I've even done videos about it before where I basically was saying that we really shouldn't buy it because of the fact that they put all this stuff in there and uh, they don't deserve it, right? Well, that's true. But let me take you on a quick little visual tour around my office here that I have and you'll see why I... Man, it got the best of me. <laughs> you see, I have everywhere you look, it's Yoda, Vader, more Vader, more Yoda, more Star Wars, Star Wars Legos, all kinds of stuff. Vader, Vader, Vader. Darth Vader's my favorite. So anyway, I'm a kid who grew up with Star Wars from the very beginning. And it's very hard for me, as well as others, to not want to see what's going on and play these things. Because, let's all be honest... That's what this is going to be. I don't want to necessarily call this a Father Knows Best or even a Fun to Run because, I mean, Fun to Run, there is reasons that this game is fun and there's lots of reasons to run as well. And some of them are almost sort of like political at this point, political in the gaming sense, where some people have chosen sides on which side they want to be on. And I also don't like the microtransactions. I feel that the companies that are using these things are going to intentionally harm or make the games that we get in the future not as much fun as they would have otherwise been in order to incentivize people, if that's a word, make people want to buy these loot crates and stuff. They don't put things in there to sell without manipulating the game in a sense to make you want to buy them, okay? So, that I'm totally against. If there were no more loot boxes ever, and there were no more microtransactions ever, I'd be happy with that. That's fine. Problem is, they do make a lot of money selling those things, and so they're not going to be gone anytime soon. In fact, they're probably here to stay. But I'm really glad that everybody raised such a stink about this Battlefront 2, because other companies have taken notice, and I think... Although we can't stop them from coming, the microtransactions, we may have slowed down how pushy they're going to be, or maybe how aggressive their tactics will be coming in the future. So anyway, like I said, I'm a huge fan of Star Wars. I've got friends that bought this game, and first of all, it looks great. It really does. It's one of the best looking games. It sounds great. If you're a Star Wars fan, it's got all the music, it's got all the sound effects, it's got a million characters. All kinds of things that would make you think this game is amazing. I do have one gripe, though, because I have a nice 4K TV that does HDR, and I have a PS4 Pro. But to date, as of when I'm putting up this video, they have not patched this game to make HDR work on it. I currently have HDR turned off on my PS4 Pro because when I play this game, it makes it all look digitally... There's, there's all kinds of a mess. Like, while you're actually playing the game, you don't really notice it, it's okay. But on the still pictures or the slow-moving things in the menus and stuff, it really looks bad. And I'm hoping that they get around to fixing that because that's one of the big selling points of the game. It says right here... PS4 Pro Enhanced, so uh, does that mean the enhancement is that the quality of the menu screens and stuff makes you want to barf and you think your TV's broken? That's, that's not an enhancement. So, anyways, what I wanted to do on this video specifically is tell people that, yes, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist, I did get a copy of this, and pleasantly surprised at some of it, okay? 
take this game and, and cut it into two. There's the online multiplayer side, which is a much bigger chunk than the offline, okay? But two sides, okay? You've got the single player campaign, which only takes about four or five hours, and it's not necessarily the best campaign in the world. It's not necessarily the best story, but it's interesting, something kind of fun to play and from what i've seen they're going to be releasing more content for it coming up in the future when the movies come out and everything so that's there but the offline stuff as far as the arcade mode and the fact that you can play split screen they even have onslaught mode which basically puts you alone or you and a friend in split screen puts you up against a hundred different enemies and uh, you get to set all the different variations about how many of them are going to be there, how many seconds you have before time runs out. It's kind of cool. And for a guy like me, I've got two little kids that actually like Star Wars as well. And my daughter likes playing this with me. This is actually... Forget about multiplayer. Forget about the loot boxes. Forget about all that crap. This is actually a fun game to play with another person, split screen. The other really cool thing about the offline modes is that you don't have to worry about unlocking all the characters like you do online. All of your abilities and perks and stuff that you've earned with your star cards will carry over to the offline stuff, but all the characters are there and available. So you do get to play as Darth Vader and people like that even if you haven't unlocked them in multiplayer yet. You can go head to head, you can do a duel where it's just two different heroes, you know, that stuff is fun. We didn't get that in the last Battlefront, in fact we haven't had that in a Star Wars game long time. Most games today don't come out with any kind of split screen. If you want to co-op on most games today, you got to do it online and you both have to have a copy of the game. Well, that's one good thing. There's a lot of people that are talking only about the bad things, and believe me, there is a mountain of bad things to talk about with this game as far as how EA is treating it and all that, like I've already said. But what people aren't saying, there's not very many people talking about the good stuff. And there is a lot of good stuff to be played offline. Now, one big gripe that I have is, is being a huge Star Wars fan X-Wing game specifically. It's my favorite game all time flying the X-Wing, the flight in this, the galactic combat or space combat, it's actually pretty good. The flying is good, the action's good, it looks great, it's fun. That's online only though. You can't play that offline. So just about everything else in the game can be played offline with either co-op or just with bots against bots and stuff like that. And you can vary the skill levels and stuff and that's not so bad. I wish that they would add space combat to the offline side. That's really the one main thing that I wish they would do. So there's that. So actually, as much as it pains me to say this, I actually don't really mind this game that much. This game as a, as a game on its own. I don't like what they're doing with it. I don't like how they're marketing it. I don't like how they're trying to overly monetize it from all of the people that already paid to buy the game. I don't like any of that. But the game itself isn't terrible. It's actually pretty fun. And it's being held back by all these other things and all this other stuff. Now, the progression does stink. I've played this online quite a bit as well as all the offline stuff and I'm having a halfway decent time playing online but even though they've changed things and you now earn credits faster and this and that you don't want to unlock everything on day one when you buy a game so I understand putting some kind of progression in there where you do have to work for it and the fact that you can't buy loot boxes anymore makes it so you have to work for it you can't just buy them with the exception of the people that paid the extra 20 bucks for the Elite Trooper Edition or whatever it was. There was some bonus things in there and some star cards already in there. But aside from that, the fact that you can't buy loot boxes now means you do have to work for it. But man, what a disappointment. 
You get your one loot box a day, you open that up, and that's usually next to nothing. Um, and then you have to play through quite a few matches to get enough money for even the cheapest. There's three different levels of loot box, and the cheapest one is like 2,200 credits, and you're only still getting 300, maybe 400 credits at the end of a match. Uh, I put up a tweet the other day. I got one credit after a match. One single solitary credit. Uh, to the game's credit, though, I must say that it dropped me into a match that was only seconds away from being over with, so I was only in the match for three seconds. I didn't even shoot the gun. But I got one credit, so I had to take a picture of that. Anyways, the the thing that really sucks still, even though there are some good things in here, the thing that really still sucks is the fact that they built this whole thing on the fact that they were going to try to sell you the loot crates. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what I don't like about all these microtransactions because they intentionally slow down your game and frustrate you to the point that they think you're going to go out of hell with it. I'll buy some stuff. That's what they're hoping you do. And so on this game, you can't buy stuff anymore, but the disappointment is still there. I went through and I did a few matches, went and did the loot crates, and... It can give you a range of different cards. You get different types of cards, but you can get different numbers of cards, too. I get three. Like, it goes and three cards pop out. One's a couple of crafting parts, one's a couple of credits, and one is something that I don't even care about. Like a, I don't know, extra shield or some stupid thing for something I don't even use. So, that part of it is pretty shitty. It really is. I wish that if they want to make the progression fair and they want to do what they're doing with it, really I think they should allow you to just choose which cards you want. And I know you can sort of do that by using your crafting parts, but just forget about the loot box, forget about the random crap because that's just frustrating. It's just a pain in the ass and it serves only one purpose, to frustrate you enough to just buy stuff. But even if you bought the credits to open loot boxes, you're still dealing with the random crab, and you probably get a bunch of stuff you don't even want, even if you paid. So, I can't recommend the game. I really can't. But I just had to make a video explaining the fact that, yeah, there's a lot of bad things about this game, but if you are like me, if you have a very specific circumstance like I do, being a huge Star Wars fan, and you have other people to play with, whether it's friends, roommates, kids, if you have other people in your house to play with, you can have a good time with Battlefront 2. I suggest you get a used copy, though, if you're going to get one, because that way EA doesn't see another sale, because it's just, you know, a used copy. It's not being sold to EA, you know, or whatever. It's already been bought once. So... Gosh, I don't know. I just felt like putting up a video telling you the honest truth about Battlefront 2. That it's not... It's a, it's a fun thing for everyone to hate on these days. And it's a very popular thing to make videos trashing. And I do trash EA. And I do trash their tactics against gamers. Because it is against us. It's not for us. It's for them. But the game itself... There is still something left in there. There's still a little, little hint of good. It's like Darth Vader. I still feel the good. I still feel the good in you. You haven't turned fully to the dark side. Not yet. Not yet. I know there is good in you. The Emperor hasn't driven it from you fully. So till next time, remember, you never outgrow video games. My name's Chad the Gaming Dad. And we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. And so long, everybody. Thanks again for watching. If you liked that video, please press like and subscribe. I love hearing from you guys, so leave your comments and any suggestions down below. Remember, there's tons of other gamers out there just like you and me. And they also know that you never outgrow video games. Feel free to share these videos all over social media, Twitter, Facebook, or whatever you use. This channel is for all of us. Let's make sure they know that they are not alone. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.